hi everybody who gets this DVD. I hope you uh, enjoy it. I'm not going to say too much all the way through it, but I'd just like to introduce it in a general way by saying there are images around Quilpie, which I've recently moved to in southwestern Queensland in the Channel Country, a thousand kilometres inland from Brisbane approximately. And the shots of some of the local wildlife and Queensland wildlife, and then some shots of uh, two exhibitions of work that I've got currently running. Enjoy. Main Street of Quilpie, 5 a.m. Similar time, in a matter of minutes later, the local windmill. These are the local kites, a type of hawk that we see all over the place, quite a large bird, about a metre across the wingspan, and they're very prevalent in flocks of up to 30 or 40 at times. This is a sunset during a, a very big dust storm we had recently. We were more like the moon than the sun when it was on. This is a flood boat, a large steel boat that was used in, a long time ago to ferry people across flood, flooded areas that were quite wide at times. It took up to eight men to lift them, they were so heavy. They now use fiberglass and aluminium boats. This, this one's miles from anywhere, sitting in the middle of a paddock with cracking earth. These are um, stockyards. Again, that sunset with the dust behind in two or three days later. A wedge tail eagle, a young juvenile, very large. You let me get very close. As they get older, they get much darker, almost black. But this one's very young with all the um, brown russet colored wings. This is a beehive, not a native bee, but probably a, a domestic bee that's um, built its hives in nature, like hanging off a cliff face, quite big, almost a metre across this hive. Again, the dust storm, different days, it was around for some time. Sometimes you couldn't see more than about 40, 50 metres. This is some of the local environs around Quilpie. The water is almost always that coffee colour due to the very muddiness of the rivers here. From dust storms to flooding within a week and back again, it happens very quickly here. These are algae that form in a thing called the Board Canal and that's um, water running out at 79 degrees Celsius out of the ground from the Artesian Basin. This is a pond for cooling water so it can be used in irrigation on the local playing fields. Because it's so hot, it has to spend two to three days on average for cooling down purposes so it's usable, otherwise it burns everything. This water comes from a kilometre below the ground. And this is the pipe that's extract, extracting the water. And people exercise their horses in the ponds and kids swim in it sometimes. It's a storm that slowly brewed. Actually, this is actually a colour photo, but the whole evening was virtually black and white with some sepia and little bits of green. The storm built up for about an hour and I just took a sequence of, of the storm photos. It's spectacular skies here with the openness of the desert country. old stockyards of Gigi wood, which is the only wood that will withstand the white ants, which will eat houses and anything else that gets in its way, or their way. This wood can stay in the ground for up to 100 years, or sometimes more.
It's so dense the timber that it will actually pierce truck tyres and aeroplane tyres. It's a black hopper too who wouldn't show me his face but I thought it was so bizarre I kept the photo anyway. A local monitor that grows about 400 millimetres long. And a bizarre night sky that was combined with rainbow and spectacular cloud formations that follow. Looks like it's been painted, but not by me. That's the edge of my sunshade sail. And then we had major flooding and then a gap and then major flooding again in a very short period recently. Some of the areas had the heaviest rainfall that had in a hundred years. We were cut off for about five days from uh, any kind of transportation. Nobody could get out. And um, the train is still out. In fact, some in some places the train lines are hanging two metres up in the air. All the soil and rock and everything taken from below them. Excuse the dogs, they're the real thing, they're in the background. <laughs> Bit of accompaniment. This is the signage going out of Quilpie toward the next town, 220 kilometres away. Quilpie, uh, Quilpie to Charlotte, sorry. It just came up and up and up and stayed around this water for quite a few days and then slowly went down again. As I said, we couldn't get in the route. I've taken these photos from a kayak, actually, or now paddle around the signs and where cars couldn't go. Local railway station, graffiti, even here. Well, it's probably been imported from the city on the railway carriages. This is just algae formed from the flooding, and the water sitting around, and then the sun baking it, making it green and gold. You see the, behind the sign there's a table, it's actually a picnic table. You only see the top of it. This is looking back toward the town. And again, you just see the town on the top of the image. This kangaroo was in the only dry place around for kilometres apart from town, and he was up on the railway line. And the next day I came there, he was there again, so he's obviously staying there. And here he is trying to catch the train. But there wasn't that train. It's the only bridge out of town in one direction. Well underwater. The walk is now a swim. This is the area immediately on the edge of the town of Quilpie. And there's the picnic table, water slowly going down, somebody's left their rubbish behind. This area is normally all dry, if you can imagine. It's just like looking like a lake now, but it's normally just rolling clay pans and dust and a few shrubs. looking back toward town again and lots of people just parking around looking and the next day here he was, this kangaroo was back. It's the road and this is the railway line. This one's just resting, it's not hurt or anything, just laying there sunbaking until I got too close and decided it was close enough and off it went. That's a nest of a parasitic ant. It's quite large. It's probably the size of a dinner plate. This is the welcome to Quilpie signs if you can get there. 
on the table again. Water's going down. Bottles are still there. Very early in the morning, 5 a.m. or just a little after, and um, this is the first person to try and get out as the water was receding. Quite fast, that water. It looks fairly harmless, but it's deceptive. It's um, got a lot of force. It's a galah and a hawk with the uh, moon. It's a serene piece of the uh, imagery around the floods. And this one is a, a depth indicator, not really saying much. And this chap's actually looking for a ball that, he, <laughs> that his dog has lost. Not actually looking for anything else. He's not lost. He's not in trouble. He's just exercising his dog in the flood water. And his other dogs have had enough. This is a little uh, railway cart that gets around, for, or did get around, but I don't think they still use it for getting around for a repairing line. It's a very large concrete water tank with a plastic one beside it, the old and the new. This is often the case around here, up on the big towers, so it's fed by gravity only. These are large pipes, as you can see how large diameter and length they are, and going, I think it was seven trucks taking these out for a new gas line, which is going on here a lot. Water lines, gas lines, and fuel lines, oil lines. And echidna up quite close, and um, then he immediately went into a ball with very sharp spikes and spines showing, and it was totally immovable. So we only satisfied ourselves with taking photos. I was breeding green tree frogs because they were actually breeding themselves in a water ditch in my property and I uh, brought them inside into an aquarium and brought about 60 of them and let them go. This was uh, some unknown frog. It was 80 centimetres, uh, 80 millimetres long at the tadpole. Turned into a very large green frog that I ended up letting go in the backyard. And these guys were all ready to leave home. As you can see, they're all climbing up the glass, losing their tails. These are in a, a large tank, floating around on a piece of bamboo, turning into frogs. You can almost see them grow from day to day. They slowly absorb their tails and then they're frogs and they're gone. And I find them all over the yard now, quite big, some of them already. This is a wasp that not drowned or anything. He's actually coming in for drinking water, taking off, landing, taking off, landing. This is quite a large tank, so for the frogs, it probably seemed a long way to the end. This is the beginning of the exhibition and these are paintings and sculptures that I've had up in a recent uh, exhibition in the art gallery. And this is a, um, a large snake, two and a half metres long, that I carved in uh, multi layers of plywood. Photographs and paintings, more paintings. If you're interested, that's my little blurb of my motivation for art. You can freeze that. Sculpture at foreground and background, paintings and sculpture on the floor, paintings on the wall, sculpture and paintings. This was a solo exhibition. And there's a the snake again. He's, he's big and he's fat and he's, uh, <laughs> he's quite a lot of fun, a lot of work. They're goannas, or images of goannas in timber. That's a timber rock and steel piece with the explanation of what it's about on the wall. Uh, dancing queens, they were pierced metal with laser and tool steel. Brazilians, large combination of stainless steel and rusting old steel. That's a photograph of a thong covered in sea life. 
Nudes, nudes is landscape on the right, and some jewellery and silversmithing. Two paintings, Pegasus and water boil. Balmy night. Another goanna. This is done in timber, the others are done in plywood. And the snake in a different gallery that the uh, exhibition is now in. About 80% of the other exhibition is now in. A different gallery also in Quilpie that I look after. And uh, two more paintings and a sculpture to the left. And um, I hope you enjoyed that. Bye bye.